makes his first defense, but the boy in the box is back. Corey Hart returns as Corey Hart with his new heartfelt self-titled album. I thought people had forgotten me, so I figured a good way to remind them was just quit them and title it my name. Um, that's not really the reason. The album is very personal. The songs reflect uh, my life. The charts in Canada and hit number three in the U.S. It wasn't the song that first broke him internationally. Do you remember which hit made Corey Hart? Next time on E! Now. The show, this old train at the Markham Museum is from the 1940s. We're not going to go back quite that far. Think 80s. That's when Corey Hart was synonymous with heartthrob. He became an international superstar with hits like Never Surrender and Sunglasses at Night. He sold 10 million albums all before he was 24. He kind of disappeared in the 90s, but he is back now. He's got a new CD out. He came on the show, talked to Valerie, and performed. What happened to you? I gotta say, I remember chasing you. You were too hot, too big, too fast. No one ever told me you were chasing me, Valerie. <laughs> yeah, I was. I wanted to talk to you. I'm not that elusive a man. Um, well, basically, I started my, my recording career when I was 21 and uh, recorded my first album uh, in 1982, 83. And uh, I, I released six albums in about eight years. And in 1990, 91, um, I really decided to, to take stock of my life and, and reflect on where I wanted to go as a, as a songwriter and, and uh, as a man and, and coming to terms with just who and what and where I wanted mm -hmm. to be. And How bad was it that you wanted to stop the world and say, because there'd be at that point enough pressure, I would think, and momentum and people who were feeding off you to say, hey, Corey, baby, keep going, just do another one. Well, truthfully, the last, the last two albums weren't uh, commercially very successful. So, I, I mean, I think the record companies always believed that, you know, I was a racehorse that, that could win eventually, but it, it was more an internal... Uh, a decision uh, for me to to stop and uh, as I say evaluate my life and when you did because you'd wanted to be a singer and songwriter from the time you were a little kid I mean you'd met Tom Jones and Paul Ank I mean this had been a path you'd been on what did you ultimately decide well I decided that I didn't have anything more to say as a writer at, um, in 91 it is a, a period where you really um, you're left almost you know, you're on shaky ground because everything that you thought you knew, you don't know anymore. And um, I always believed that I should write when I felt I had something to say. And that's, you know, I went through my 20s just constantly writing and uh, found myself at uh, 29, uh, 30 and didn't have anything to say and mm -hmm. therefore I, I really stopped. But uh, also, like I mentioned before, I, I think that I needed to, to just evaluate if I was happy doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's important to be happy what you're doing. So five years later, you're happy doing it, and you've got a lot to say, which is... Pretty much sums what it this up. <laughs> That's why so you're, you're in the TV Julie business. Mass, and you've got a lovely little 15-month-old baby girl. And uh, she's... Uh, uh, are you a parent? Yeah, I have yeah. three kids, but they're oh, big. They're big. Okay, well, we won't get into the specifics. But... Uh, but I love babies, so 15 months old is... It's just... Uh, it's unbelievable. It's, it's the most wonderful uh, experience I've ever uh, been fortunate enough to live through. Pretty interesting. You've dedicated this CD to your ex-wife. I mean, people would think, well, that, that's odd. Why? Well, I, you know, I, I spent 14 years uh, with this lady, and, and uh, we grew up together, and uh, her spirit um, enveloped many of the songs, and uh, she'll always be a part of, of, of my soul, and I, I felt it was appropriate to do so. Mm -hmm. So do you feel comfortable now that this is, you're going on tour again, you've got TV specials that you're cranking it up again? I but feel great. I, I mean, I feel fantastic. I, I feel that, um, uh, like I said, when I decided to go ahead and make the record, and it was people around me that really encouraged me, you know, the people that were close to me, my family and, and my manager and my friends, they said, you know, Corey, you should make another record, and um, I, I think that uh, your fans out there w would like to hear some of your new songs. And, uh, yeah, so I, I'm ready for another run Go at, at it. it. Yeah. But this time, what? You're smarter? I'm just older. <laughs> you know, That's uh, it. Yeah, just older, and uh, I've got a little more uh, irony to me than I did before. Yeah. Well, it's really nice to see you. So you're going to sing a little bit of um, Black Cloud Rain? Yeah, with the, with the first the boys? single. Pardon me? With the boys with over the there? With the boys over there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'd yeah, be they're great. They're waiting on me. Well, 
It was nice to meet nice you, to see and you. I'm sorry. Uh, all those years, all those gave, years, it was worth it. And then I'll be listening to you soon now. Thanks, Valerie. Thank you, Claude. Cheers.